Honus signed off on taxpayers' money for a contract to his associates. Why a St. Lucian company owned his house and where he got the money. It's established through his wife, who is a real estate developer, to build the house. This is, this is the 800 million, 800 million project of cars. He got started building parking lots. to don't like taxes too much because absolutely yeah the, 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 I'm, a, I'm a small government um, free enterprise mm -hmm. person I believe that markets work best mm -hmm. and taxes are distortionary okay is that why you didn't pay the property taxes on the home no my property taxes are paid on the THS website when we did the valuation numbers for your properties the outstanding taxes are there no my, my taxes are paid. It wasn't me, boat captain forced to clear name after his driver's license found at scene of deadly Negro shootout with police. Three of the four men who were shot dead in an alleged confrontation with members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force in Negro Square, Westmoreland on Friday have been identified. In a twist to the story, Cable Smith's driver's license was found in a parking lot in proximity to where four alleged gunmen were killed in a blazing gunfight with the police in Negro, Westmoreland, and for several hours. It was believed that he was one of the slain gunmen, however, Smith is very much alive and well. Now welcome back to another excuse for life. Now blessing goes out to all my viewers and all my subbies. All my well wishes. Like, share and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Coming up in today's topic and review. The PNP's Dwayne Vaz is a suspect in... The police have confirmed that a man seen in a photograph with a former member of parliament for Central Westmoreland, the PNP's Dwayne Vaz, is a suspect in last Friday's deadly confrontation between the police and gunmen in Negril. The man is suspected to be a lookout driver for the five men killed by the police moments before they were reportedly set to rob a beryllium armored vehicle transporting several million dollars in cash. In the photograph, which has been been making the rounds since Saturday, the man can be seen posing alongside Mr. Vaz at what appears to be an event for school children. There's no information about the date of the photograph. Now bless you for saying my viewers and my subscribers and may I say thanks for tuning in to another one of exclusive for a topic discussion and review. Now before we get into today's a topic and discussion, we just want to big up all of my new subscribers. I also want to big up all of my continuous viewers. I also want to ask you a lot. Please make sure to share this very, very, very important important broadcast because in this one I have two a topic that I'm gonna share with you now one of them is where one of the person that was alleged got murdered in the beryllium attempt robbery last Friday I would say very much alive and well are arose from the dead because the police them identified this man and made public announcement that this man is dead until this man get phone call from him family say him him dead the man say but okay he attack to me I'm dead now how oh, now me know the most what do how comes him get caught up in this mess however him say him the day on the scene of the shooting and somehow coincidentally film driver's license got lost during the process now straight things happening because this man is currently a captain for a boat so me just ask myself what a coincidence that these wannabe robbers drive straight to the ocean or straight to the water straight to the port i don't know me just i wonder if maybe after the robbery, Dessa was the exit point and this the exit out of the place from the boat. But everything get fucked. I don't know. But more to the felicity where this man I say you now. 
Because Mr. Andrew Ole is come out and they go out with himself, you know. Don't go out to the Felix out where this man has said, maybe I'm overthinking the situation. But me know, say, what a coincidence. And listen to his statement. It wasn't me. Boat captain forced to clear name after his driver's license found at scene of deadly Negro shootout with police. Three of the four men who were shot dead in an alleged confrontation with members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force in Negro Square, Westmoreland on Friday have been identified. In a twist to the story, Cable Smith's driver's license was found in a parking lot in proximity to where four alleged gunmen were killed in a blazing gunfight with the police in Negro, Westmoreland, and for several hours. It was believed that he was one of the slain gunmen, however, Smith is very much alive and well. In the future, whenever boat captain Cable Smith, of Cave District, Westmoreland, hears Shaggy's hit song, It Wasn't Me, it should bring back bittersweet memories. Last Friday, Smith's driver's license was found in a parking lot in proximity to where four alleged gunmen were killed in a blazing gunfight with the police in Negril, Westmoreland, and for several hours, it was believed that he was one of the slain gunmen, however, Smith is very much alive and well, as while well he was in the resort town. At the time of the shooting, and actually saw it unfolding from a distance, it was verified by CCTV footage, which was examined by the police, that he was not involved. My car was parked around the back of Burger King car park so, after the shooting, I went around there to retrieve it. At that time, people were rushing around there to view the bodies and the guns the police had seized. I believe it was at that time that I lost my driver's license, which I thought I put in my car door pocket. Smith said that after hanging around in the car park for a while, he drove off with his family, headed for Anchovy, St. James, where he picked up his daughter, who was having her birthday, and drove on to Montego Bay to get a cake for her. While in Montego Bay, I got a call from my brother, who told me that news was going around that I was killed in a police shootout in Negril. After my brother hang up, my phone began blowing up with more people calling me to tell me that a video had gone viral with a picture of my driver's license and some guns, said Smith. He said that, out of curiosity, he rushed to his vehicle just to ensure that his driver's license was where he thought he had placed it. To his dismay, the money he had with the driver's license was there, but the driver's license was missing. Frightened by the situation, Smith said he called a police friend and explained the situation to him. The friend told him to head back to Negril and turn himself into the police to have the matter rectified. However, instead of going to the police station, Smith went back to the business place where he was during the shooting, and to his absolute delight, they had a working CCTV system which could verify that he was there at the time of the shooting. I stayed at the business place and called the police and several senior officers, including Senior Superintendent Othniel Dobson, the police commander for Westmoreland, came, said Smith. They went through the CCTV footage in my presence and saw that I was there before the shooting, during the shooting and after the shooting. They looked at the transaction that I did and the receipt that I got. I also gave them the password for my phone and they went through it and gave it back to me. After the police complete their checks, Smith said he was told that they saw nothing to tie him to the incident and he was told he was free to go home. However, his driver's license was not returned as, according to him, the police said they wanted to check his driving record and vehicle ownership history. I was told by Mr. Dobson to meet him at the police headquarters in Savannah Lamar today, Sunday, but when I called him, he said he was out of town. I am now to meet him tomorrow, Monday, morning at 9 a.m., said Smith. I just want to get over with this and clear my name as people are still posting photographs of me on the internet and others are making bad remarks about me. I just want this situation cleared up so that I can move on with my life. While efforts to contact Dobson were unsuccessful, a reliable police source in Westmoreland confirmed Smith's story, which he described as a most unfortunate situation, which should be cleared up after Smith meets Dobson. In the shooting incident on Friday, the police intercepted a convoy of robbers, who, intelligence suggested, were on their way to rob a Balium cash and transit courier vehicle. In an blazing gun battle, four of the alleged robbers were killed, and six firearms, including three rifles, seized.
Andrew Olness come out and them a brag about the police them these days are more strategic and them all of this because as you know police them nowadays is like a theme police force now I'm wanting to take a listen to what he must say in this clip you know that this is a warning to all the criminals definitely sir that the JCF of today is not the JCF of 10 years ago definitely not no the JCF of today is more strategic uh, it has an enduring force it is using intelligence information cyber all kinds of intelligence and it is putting it all together in an operational plan which is not just uh, targeted at gangs but it is targeted at masterminds it is targeted at street level uh, in my opinion it is being very effective and we're seeing the we're seeing the results but the, the key element of it is the leadership yes sir and the leadership's involvement of the community and wherever i go i'm i'm seeing that there is a far better police community relations and that's that's important that's important yeah. so keep up the good work and, con Thank and you compliments much, to your to your men and women. Thank you very much, sir. Very good. Frankly, I find this as a disrespect to all the veteran police officers who have served Jamaica and have contributed so much to the police force. For Angie Owens, I say, them little dibby dibby are corrupt police officers where Jamaica have never seen the police force so corrupt in the history of the police force since Mr. Angie Owens take over for him for come and talk about these police officers nowadays are better than the officers back in the days. Bigger Ford, Adam Allen, man, the cowboy, and I hear them man, they come. Remember, but me I tell a man, bad man I run. So me no know Mr. Andrew only to talk about. Now my viewers, me I get down to the nitty gritty of this blog. Cause you know me always a point out things to it and I make a point out something too in, in this blog where it's very important and I want to make note of it and take account of it. Now recently, um, as you know, know the rabbi go on, now the police then made this statement. Three of the four men who were shot DEAD in their alleged confrontation with the member of the Jamaica Constable Force in Eagle Square in Westmoreland on Friday have been identified. The police said six other persons, including one of the men who were shot and injured in the confrontation, have been taken into custody. That man is from Greenville in Manchester. The other man are 37 year old Calvel Smith from Cav District and Akram Vincent Forrest, 29, from Geneva District in Grange Hill, both in Westmoreland. So, as you can hear, the police identified Calvel Smith as one of the deceased. So, our professionals are these police officers. These police that Bogart said are so great, you understand? Didn't even realize that when they were made in the statement saying that this individual was deceased, this individual wasn't even one of the injured individual that was deceased so right there so they make a mistake and however as you can hear the deceased individual i say him never dead and him did there the place and as me say him was a captain however he understand him calling police friend and however right now them i say he wasn't a part of it and how coincident it is that you know i mean this man driver's license happens today right at the crime scene and at the same time the robbers them are head towards the port you understand what i said to you and at the same time this man is a captain however me now make no allegation or no accusation i'm just opening an eye to that aspect but if one thing said that more i show no me i show no even something deeper let me get into this article for now that was posted in the newspaper now here are my viewers and subbies here are this article i say amongst the deceased is 34 year old nicole delavante from waterford in portmore st catherine delavante was out on $200,000 bill for the shooting of a police 
inspector in Old Arbor St. Catherine last year. He was also charged for robbing an ATM last year. Now, you have to ask yourself, which judge get this man bail? And this is how I say the government of Jamaica doesn't rate the police force because how that the policeman they feel for no say him get shot and this criminal who we shot him get bail for shooting a police inspector. Now, as far as I know, shooting a law enforcement officer is like capital punishment. So I can understand how this judge even consider giving this man bail. And you see where I go on here, sir? However, that's Jamaica. That may point out for no. Only make note of it. That may try to show no. Criminals, we understand, can get a little bit of bail, but law abiding citizen I get some serious amount of bail. Can look at the lady where they are fighting the police officer. A hundred thousand dollar bail them get she, you know. And this man will shoot a police inspector. Rob also a ATM was only given two hundred thousand dollar bail. That's the Jamaica system for you. Now this next topic is of Andrew Olness admitting that he doesn't like to pay tax and also showing to the public say how much he's a lying person and it also a show his wife Juliet Holiness show no how them really stay. Now if you don't want to believe this documentary you can go look it up I go Jamaica go see for yourself because this is real. Check out this documentary and make sure you know, watch it till the end on the also leave on the comment down in the comment section on an honest opinion from what you know, watch from the video. No you know, feelings over man. Check this out. Andrew Honest signed off on taxpayers' money for a contract to his associates. Why a St. Lucian company owned his house? and where he got the money. It's established through his wife, who is a real estate developer, to build the house. This is, this is the 800 million, 800 million project we can't see, but started building parking lots on the latest section. And then when they finish with this road, it's going to run across our veranda. Yes. Our veranda. There's a whole bunch of violation. So our tax plan is to reduce um, transaction taxes, particularly in construction and real estate. Jamaica's newest Prime Minister, Andrew Honus. His house became front and center. The public, they wanted to know why a St. Lucian company owned his house and where he got the money. Since news reports had put its value at about two million US dollars, a figure Honus has not confirmed. After all, Honus had been a politician most of his professional life, didn't come from money, and his salary at the time was just over 60,000 US dollars each year. We found an interesting series of property purchases and an uneven playing field when it comes to personal tax matters. This is the house, built on three quarters of an acre, complete with stone cut wall in the exclusive Beverly Hills neighborhood just outside Kingston. It's a huge upgrade from where Jamaica's newest prime minister and then opposition leader Andrew Honus says he was born. I was born in a two bedroom board house at 56 Cumberland Road in a Spanish town. Property records show the Beverly Hills land was purchased by a St. Lucian based company Admat Incorporated for 300,000 US dollars in 2011 three months before Honus became Prime Minister of Jamaica for the first time, and when he was Minister of Education. There's no mortgage listed. In a statement, Honus says he's a sole director of ADMAT and a shareholder, along with his two sons, Adam and Matthew. Honus says he got the money from funds in his accounts at two of Jamaica's investment banks and used his savings, salary, loans and credit from suppliers established through his wife, who is a real estate developer, to build the house, costing him approximately $52 million or around 525000 U.S. 
He says the St. Lucian structure was used for estate planning. His attorney, Patrick Bailey, says there's that and the additional potential benefit of avoiding transfer taxes. If the house at Beverly Hills is the only asset and he was selling it, he would simply sell the company, sell the shares. The company would have its shareholding transferred from him and his children to the new purchasers. Whereas the title would remain unchanged because the new purchase would be the owners of Admat and be the owners of the property. So in that case, there's no transfer from one entity to another. Mm -hmm. So you're safe on transfer tax and stamp duties and those sorts of things. Civil society activist Carol Narcy says the leader of the country shouldn't be trying to avoid taxes. Especially if you're an, a, a prime minister and you're telling your citizens that they need to conform to the regulatory environment that you have designed that you do not think you can adhere to because it is inimical to your interest to adhere to it or inimical to the interest of your children's future to adhere to it then there is a major um, you know there's a there's a major inconsistency there that you need to explain where is the economy going? Have you done any analysis of your tax plan and what economic growth is going to look like in your first yeah, we've done year? Good, uh, I wouldn't want to give you a specific figure. But your analysis will, must have produced something that is tangible for the people to understand. Yeah, yeah, statement to me. Yeah. Let's talk so, about some of the other taxes that you, uh, tax incentives and lower rates. Yeah. And so in I think general, there was mention of some transfer taxes yeah, as so well. In general, do you want to, our tax plan, is to reduce um, transaction taxes, particularly in construction and real estate, because those are major employment areas. So we will bring to the levels which we had them before um, our uh, transfer tax and stamp duties mm -hmm. um, and estate taxes as well. You send, seem to don't like taxes too much because absolutely, yeah. the, 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 I'm, a, I'm a small government. Um, free enterprise mm -hmm. person. I believe that markets work best mm -hmm. and taxes are distortionary. Okay. Is that why you didn't pay the property taxes on the home? No, my property taxes are paid. 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 On the THS website, when we did the valuation numbers for your properties, the outstanding taxes are there. No, 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 no. My, my taxes are paid, are paid, are paid, are paid. When we looked, there was your Great House Boulevard property. Um, there was your property that's owned by Admat, which you say you're the sole director of. Mm -hmm. And then there's another property that we actually found under Admat as well, up at Wycliffe Close. Mm -hmm. um, all, well, all three were outstanding, standing, standing, standing. And then we um, saw that at Wycliffe Close, taxes seem to have been outstanding since 2009. What about the other property though at uh, Wycliffe Close? That I would have to check on. That I would have to check on. That I would have to check on. I mean, that's been there for a little while, so I'd have to check on. But, but I don't want to, to, to distract from the message. But I don't want to, to, to distract from the message. But I don't want to, to, to distract from the message. No, but you are the person that's saying that you don't necessarily love taxes, that you don't necessarily love taxes that you don't necessarily love taxes yeah yeah and but, so but you are the lead you are mm -hmm. you are a leader of this country mm -hmm. potentially the premier leader of this country come next week and so I'm asking you the question as the leader of a country do you believe that your taxes should have been more up-to-date no, than the record reflects you, yeah. what I'm saying to you mm -hmm. um, from my best recollection mm -hmm. um, I've paid my taxes now if 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 it is Mm -hmm. that they are um, outstanding. Mm -hmm. If if it is mm -hmm. that they are um, outstanding, mm -hmm. it's not an issue for to pay them. Yep. It's not an issue for to pay them. Yep. It's not an issue for to pay them. Yep. It's not an issue for to pay them. Okay. I'm not hiding from taxes. Mm -hmm. But Admat is designed for you to avoid potential no, no. estate taxes no. and transfer taxes. You're no. not no, it's designed for estate planning purposes. For estate yes, planning yes, purposes, yes. that means basically that you avoid some sort of taxes. And I'm saying, does it look good for a no, leader I, of a I'm country? Not, I'm not clear. Mm -hmm. It was set up merely mm -hmm. as a way of holding assets. So it's a holding company. Mm -hmm. It was set up merely mm -hmm. as a way of 
holding asset. So it's a holding company. Mm -hmm. It was set up merely mm -hmm. as a way of holding assets. So it's a holding company. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, it's not illegal. It's not illegal. It's not illegal. It's not illegal right. to establish. And many persons have. But no. It's not illegal right. to establish. And many persons have. But no. It's not illegal. Right. to establish and many persons have but. no doubt i'm not talking about yeah. the legality i'm more talking about mm. does it look good for a leader to be 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 trying to set up their situation so that no. they avoid paying no, tax no 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 any any company can i think um avoid i think um avoid i think um avoid i think um avoid um the, in, being in a situation. You just said a while ago um, that you, there, you don't see a sense where you would be able to sell everything. What's no, everything? No. What's everything? No, my, you will talk again. No, one thing I wanted to I ask think you about. Gone, you've gone hold on, hold on, no, hold on, Mr. <laughs> Honest. Mr. Honest, yeah, I must ask yeah, you a question. 20. You don't see a sense where you would be able to sell everything. What's no, everything? No. What's everything? No, my, you... Does he own other entities in there? In Admat? In Admat? Yeah. I think he has at least one other property in Admat. And where is that? Um, that is in somewhere in the in the Arcadia area, right? And that's right. considered land or also. Come as an apartment. Actually, is now in the process of selling that unit. He owes suppliers because suppliers uh, gave him credit for the house he's building in um, in, in in Beverly Hills. And source of funds for that was what? That one, I I I I can't can't recall all of those details. He has always used the house. That, he, that house that he lives in and get loans and that sort of thing. We checked the title for the property where Bailey says both Honus and his wife lived at the time of our interview and found no additional loans or mortgages. He has always used the house that he that house that he lives in and get loans and that's all and get loans and that's all we checked the title for the property where bailey says both honus and his wife lived at the time of our interview and found no additional loans or mortgages and they bought the house for seven million jamaican dollars around one hundred forty four thousand u.s dollars back then he has always used the house that he that house that he lives in and get loans and that's all so you were satisfied then with the source of the funds in both cases oh absolutely absolutely Sorry. absolutely absolutely he was saving because these are savings is that savings from him alone or him and his wife i don't have level of personal detail <laughs> that's that that would be yeah, i don't know that level of what you know is there any evidence i know of nothing that? i have known nothing else that he owns in relation to, um, admit. We checked the title for the Acadia property and found that it was indeed purchased by the same St. Lucian company Admat Incorporated in 2008, again when Honus was Minister of Education. The price tag? 16 million Jamaican dollars, around 219,000 US back then, and again, no mortgage was listed. Further, we also checked whether Admat owned additional properties and found one more. A half-acre lot, also bought in Beverly Hills on Wakecliff Close in February 2009, also when Honus was Minister of Education, price tag around 15 million Jamaican dollars, almost 173,000 US dollars, and again, no mortgage listed. Of what you know, is there any evidence? I know of nothing, I have known nothing else that he owns in relation to um, Admat. So you've never heard of this Wakecliff Close property before today? Um, let me put it this way, I have never handled, and when I look at the transfer, I see the names of lawyers who I know, and he's entitled to have more than one lawyer. <laughs> we all have to eat. There's the Great House Boulevard home that Honus and his wife bought with a mortgage while Honus was a mere member of parliament, and in the four years he was Minister of Education, earning the equivalent of around 60,000 US dollars per year, or 90,000 with allowances, there was the Arcadia apartment, no mortgage listed. The land at Wakecliff Close in Beverly Hills, no mortgage listed. The land for the Shenstone Beverly Hills house he's building, no mortgage listed. And around 525,000 US dollars spent building the house in the three years after Honus's Jamaica Labour Party lost the election in 2011. Honus, through a member of his team, said he wouldn't comment on the source of funds for any of his properties before the election, but even after, he didn't. He also said he would make his financial statement public at the end of March 2016, but he didn't. 
Despite several calls to Juliet Honess, a property developer, chartered accountant and newly elected member of parliament, she didn't get back to us. What about property taxes? No man, he, pay, he has to pay property tax. At the time of our initial checks and the two weeks before the election, the house in Beverly Hills had an outstanding balance since 2013 on the tax administration's website. What about property taxes? No man, he, pay, he has to pay property tax. The house in Beverly Hills had an outstanding balance since 2013 on the tax administration's website. Amount? About $174,000 or U.S. $1,400 approximately. Property taxes on the Waycliffe Close land in Beverly Hills were listed as not having been paid since 2009, a total of about $175,000 or U.S. around $1,400. And the Great House Boulevard home that he owned with his wife, Juliet, that was listed as outstanding since 2014, owing Jamaican $64,000 or about 526 US dollars. We called the tax administration to confirm. Volume is 1118. Andrew Olney? Yeah. The amount is $64,000, outstanding at $50 for two years. All in. Honus or his entities were listed at the time as owing almost 413,000 Jamaican dollars. No man, he, pay, he has to pay property tax. Around 3,400 US dollars. It wasn't clear if there were any amounts owing for the apartment at Arcadia Drive. Caroline Hay, former deputy director of public prosecution, says, in general, no leader should be backed up on their taxes. We did not ask her specifically about Honus. No public official ought to be behind on their taxes. You are in a position when you are a public official in a position of trust and one would imagine an example to the nation as to how we, what values we want in positions of leadership. Days after 18 Degrees North brought it to Honus' attention and before the election, the tax administration's website reflected zero balances for the two Beverly Hills properties at Shenstone Drive and Wakelift Close. However, taxes on the house he owns with his wife were still listed as owing as of our last check, March 18, 2016, even as he became Prime Minister of Jamaica for a second time. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Jamaica. Corruption will not be tolerated in this government. The property at Waycliffe Close in Beverly Hills remains an open lot today. As it turns out, the owner, Andrew Honus's Admat Incorporated, applied to the National Environmental Planning Agency to build townhouses in 2010, but that application was turned down. Representing Admat in this application was one Robert Garvin. And Robert Garvin is not a director in any way, shape or form of Admat. No, but he's not, he's not, he's not. But why would Robert Garvin's name then appear on an application to the land development? I mean, the... Because he's acting as agent, he's doing the process. Okay. <laughs> That's not unusual. According to company's office records, Robert Garvin is or was a director of other entities affiliated with Andrew or Juliet Honess. Positive Jamaica Foundation Limited, Sunshine Mobile, West Central St. Andrew Trust Limited, Omega Bridge Finance, and the now removed Delito Taxi Service. Who is um Robert Garvin? Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. But Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. But, but I, I do remember positive. But I did set up Positive Jamaica, I remember that. Right, but he's yeah. one. Yeah. Positive Jamaica is um, yeah. in part a director by um, Garvin. I, I know he was a director of... of and by the way, Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. But what about the fact that Garvin used this address, 28 Herb McKinley? Because this is my address? Because this is my address? Because this is my address? It's precisely what I'm saying. You're at 28 Herb McKinley, no? I know. Yeah. So why Robert Garvin used it and you... Because we set up the company here. Garvin, I'm not saying that. I don't remember the name. Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. But Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. But Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. But Separately, Robert Garvin is also listed as the director of Westkin Construction, along with one Donovan Simpson. 
Garvin used the address 25 Dominica Drive while setting up West Con, the same address he and Honus used when registering West Central St. Andrew Trust Limited. Government records show West Con Construction as receiving 14 government contracts, totaling 28.5 million Jamaican dollars or around 386,000 US dollars. This was between 2006 and 2009 even as Honus or his wife shared directorships with Garvin on four entities. Twelve of the 14 contracts were under the JLP government with which Honus has a career-long affiliation. Nine of the 14 list zero or only one tender. Ten of the 14 were granted by the Minister of Education when Andrew Honus was minister and by the National Works Agency and Social Development Commission for work in Honus's constituency. Honus even instructed the Social Development Commission to pay Westcon Construction just under one and a half million Jamaican dollars or around US $21,000 back then. He signed the document himself. There was only one bidder for cleaning, bushing and trimming of the roadways in Honus's constituency of West Central St. Andrew and no procurement committee approval. Payment was requested by Honus December 20th, 2007 and paid promptly on the same day. Civil society activist Carol Narcisse says awarding of government contracts in Jamaica has been a long-standing cause for concern. When each side is in government, um, they, there are um, on, on, uncomfortable levels of awarding of contracts to persons who are either political supporters, um, um, campaign financiers, or other connected parties. We asked Honus whether he declared his relationship with Garvin while contracts were being awarded to Westkin Construction, but he didn't get back to us. We called Garvin, but he said he couldn't talk at the time and he didn't answer our text message. When contacted, Garvin's partner in Westkin Construction, Donovan Simpson, he tried to distance himself from the inner workings of the company. I don't know where are these projects. I don't know how much we're collected. So you didn't benefit from these contracts, that's what you're saying? No. Even though his name is not on the, um, the filing, is really? Andrew Honus a part of this company? Do you know if Garvin is a friend of Andrew Honus? Yes, yeah, man, they are friends. They are very close. They are from the two of us. Mm -hmm. Our friends. It's what Andrew went in politics, you know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I met him at, at, at Seattle's office because Robert and Seattle were, 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 were very close also, you know. Okay. So the first time I saw Andrew is when Robert invited me to the Seattle office in New Kingston. We searched but could find no record of Honus declaring his relationship with Robert Garvin or Donovan Simpson. And the Office of the Contractor General would only say that we should request an investigation, which we did. When asked in a general sense, and not about Honus specifically, Caroline Hay says these kinds of relationships should be declared. In the procurement rules and guidelines that I've read, there's been a concern about whether there is a connection either directly, meaning you have an interest in a company that's bidding for public assets and public benefit, or indirectly, meaning it's in the name of a wife, in the name of a girlfriend, in the name of a child, in the name of an associate. This is a duty of our staff and any other public officers and officials directly or indirectly involved in the procurement process, especially in the preparation of bidding documents, evaluation, contract negotiations, contract management and payments to declare any potential conflicts of interest. Whether Honus declared his relationship with Garvin remains unclear. Everything has been declared. We checked with the Integrity Commission, but no one ever got back to us. These declarations of assets need to be brought under the ambit of the Access to Information Act so that we can request to see and be given or given a good reason why we can't be given. In Jamaica, breaches of the rules governing the awarding of government contracts carry a possible fine of $1,000 or around eight US dollars. Can you give me a sense of who Robert Garvin is? This 10 point tax plan. During the election campaign though, there were skeptics. Critics charged, how was he going to plug the millions in lost revenues in US dollar terms when his plan would essentially eliminate income tax on those earning the equivalent of around 12,000 US dollars or less? 
POTUS's plan was to spur spending and generate more revenue from consumption tax while raising taxes on high-end earners. We caught up with Honus on the campaign trail. We asked him what else he had up his sleeve and why at the time was he listed as being behind on his property taxes. Where is the economy going? Have you done any analysis of your tax plan and what economic growth is going to look like? Mm -hmm. I believe that markets work best mm -hmm. and taxes are distortionary. Okay. Is that why you didn't pay the property taxes on the home? No, my property taxes are paid. On the THS website, when we did the valuation numbers for your properties, the outstanding taxes are there? No, my, my taxes are paid. When we looked, there was your Great House Boulevard property. Um, there was your property that's owned by Admat, which you say you're so... West Central St. Andrew Trust Limited, Omega Bridge Finance, and the now removed Delito Taxi Service. Who is um, Robert Garvin? Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. But I, I do remember positive. But I did set up Positive Jamaica, I remember that. Right, but he's yeah. one. Yeah. Positive Jamaica is um, mm. in part a director by um, Garvin. I know he was a director of... of and by the way, one to more thing. What about the fact that Garvin used this address, 28 Herb McKinley? Because this is my address, it's precisely what I'm saying. You're at 28 Herb McKinley, you know? I know, yeah. so why Robert Garvin used it and you... Because we set up the company here. Garvin, I'm not saying that. I don't remember the name. Separately, Robert Garvin is also listed as the director of Westkin Construction, along with one Donovan Simpson. Garvin used the address 25 Dominica Drive while setting up Westcon, the same address he and Honus used when registering West Central St. Andrew Trust Limited. Government records show Westkin Construction as receiving 14 government contracts, totaling 28.5 million Jamaican dollars, or around 386,000 US dollars. This was between 2006 and 2009, even as Honus or his wife shared directorships with Garvin on four entities. Twelve of the 14 contracts were under the JLP government with which Honus has a career-long affiliation. Nine of the 14 list zero or only one tender. Ten of the 14 were granted by the Minister of Education when Andrew Honus was Minister and by the National Works Agency and Social Development Commission for work in Honus's constituency. Honus even instructed the Social Development Commission to pay Westkin Construction just under one and a half million Jamaican dollars or around US $21,000 back then. He signed the document himself. There was only one bidder for cleaning, bushing and trimming of the roadways in Honus's constituency of West Central St. Andrew and no procurement committee approval. Payment was requested by Honus December 20th, 2007 and paid promptly on the same day. Civil society activist Carol Narcisse says awarding of government contracts in Jamaica has been a long-standing cause for concern. When each side is in government, um, they, there are um, un, un, uncomfortable levels of awarding of contracts to persons who are either political supporters, um, um, campaign financiers, or other connected parties. We asked Honus whether he declared his relationship with Garvin while contracts were being awarded to Westkin Construction, but he didn't get back to us. We called Garvin, but he said he couldn't talk at the time and he didn't answer our text message. When contacted, Garvin's partner in Westkin Construction, Donovan Simpson, he tried to distance himself from the inner workings of the company. I don't know where are these projects. I don't know how much we're collected. So you didn't benefit from these contracts, that's what you're saying? No. Even though his name is not on the um, the filing, is really? Andrew Honus a part of this company? Do you know if Garvin is a friend of Andrew Honus? Yes, yeah, man, they are friends. They are very close. They are from the two of us. Mm -hmm. Our friends. It's what Andrew went in politics, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I met him at, at, at Siaga's office because Robert and Siaga were, 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 were very close also, you know. Okay. So the first time I saw Andrew is when Robert invited me to the Siaga's office in New Kingston. We searched, but could find no record of Honus declaring his relationship with Robert Garvin or Donovan Simpson. And the Office of the Contractor General would only say that we should request an investigation, which we did. When asked in a general sense, and not about Honus specifically, Caroline Hayes says 
these kinds of relationships should be declared. In the procurement rules and guidelines that I've read, there's been a concern about whether there is a connection either directly, meaning you have an interest in a company that's bidding for public assets and public benefit, or indirectly, meaning it's in the name of a wife, in the name of a girlfriend, in the name of a child, in the name of an associate. This is a duty of our staff and any other public officers and officials directly or indirectly involved in the procurement process, especially in the preparation of bidding documents, evaluation, contract negotiations, contract management and payments to declare any potential conflicts of interest. Whether Honest declared his relationship with Garvin remains unclear. Everything has been declared. We checked with the Integrity Commission, but no one ever got back to us. These declarations of assets need to be brought under the ambit of the Access to Information Act so that we can request to see and be given or given a good reason why we can't be given. In Jamaica, breaches of the rules governing the awarding of government contracts carry a possible fine of $1,000 or around eight U.S. dollars. Can you give me a sense of who Robert Garvin is? This 10-point tax plan. During the election campaign though, there were skeptics. Critics charged, how was he going to plug the millions in lost revenues in U.S. dollar terms when his plan would essentially eliminate income tax on those earning the equivalent of around 12,000 U.S. dollars or less? Honus's plan was to spur spending and generate more revenue from consumption tax while raising taxes on high-end earners. We caught up with Honus on the campaign trail. We asked him what else he had up his sleeve and why at the time was he listed as being behind on his property taxes. Where is the economy going? Have you done any analysis of your tax plan and what economic growth is going to look like? Mm -hmm. I believe that markets work best mm -hmm. and taxes are distortionary. Okay. Is that why you didn't pay the property taxes on the home? No, my property taxes are paid. On the THS website when we did the valuation numbers for your properties, the outstanding taxes are there? No, my, my taxes are paid. When we looked, there was your Great House Boulevard property. Um, there was your property that's owned by Admat, which you say you're the sole director of. Mm -hmm. And then there's another property that we actually found under Admat as well, up at Wycliffe Close. Mm -hmm. um, all, well, all three were outstanding. And then we um, saw that at Wycliffe Close, taxes seem to have been outstanding since 2009. Okay. What about the other property though, at uh, Wycliffe Close? That I would have to check on. I mean, that's been there for a little while, so I'd have to check on. But, but I don't... No, but you are the person that's saying that you don't necessarily love taxes, yeah? Yeah. And but, so but, you are the lead, you are, mm -hmm. you are a leader of this country, mm -hmm. potentially the premier leader of this country come next week. And so I'm asking you the question, as the leader of a country, do you believe that your taxes should have been more up to date no, than the I'm record you, reflects. Yeah. What I'm saying to you, mm -hmm. um, from my best recollection, mm -hmm. um, I've paid my taxes. Now, if 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 it is mm -hmm. that they are um, outstanding, mm -hmm. it's not an issue for to pay them. That means basically that you avoid some sort of taxes. And I'm saying, does it look good for a no, leader I, of a I'm country? Not, I'm not clear. It's not likely that I would be able to sell everything. Mm -hmm. It was set up merely mm -hmm. as a way of holding assets. So it's a holding company, mm -hmm. that's it. Um, it's not illegal right. to establish, and many persons have. But no doubt, I'm not talking about yeah. the legality. I'm more talking about, does it look good for a leader to be trying to set up their situation so that no. they avoid paying no, tax? No, 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 no. Look, my view on the matter is this. Um, you should plan your estate and plan for taxes the best way possible. You just said a while ago um, that you, there, you don't see a sense where you would be able to sell everything. What's no, everything? No. What's everything? No, my, you mentioned two properties. I mean, right. Yeah. Here's Wycliffe Close, yeah. right, but, which is an open I'll land you, right now. Look, we'll talk again. No, one thing I wanted to ask I think you about. You've gone, you've gone hold on, hold on, no, hold on, Mr. Honest. Mr. Honest, I must ask yeah, you a question. 21. Can you give me a sense of who Robert Garvin is? He's the company secretary, but what's the issue? Remember to like and subscribe because this is just about to get crazy. This is this is the oh, 800 million, 800 million project we we talk about. What? Um, 
yeah this is 800 million and this is the forest the civic source these are the this is the group of people affected by what's going on right here they talk about how it was approved and what happened no by the way i have a ati with nepa and kcmc for the original documents because the people can't get them documents but that is what they were supposed to um this is what they yeah. were supposed to do. Six two-story townhouses, two three-story mm -hmm. apartment blocks, right? Um, and you see where it said block C and E containing basement for entertainment. You yes. actually put housing in the basement with balcony, but you can't see it from the front. It's at the back. So we have all of those documents. But this is this is this is the place right here. No, this is you see where they want to bring the, the this is where they want to bring the um the road in. The road origin originally was supposed to be over here. Yes. That was it. Then they move it over here. These are the people. This this plot right there. Um, uh -huh. the owners, they're in court with her. They actually sold her this section. This yes. section, right? We say unit B and unit D. Mm -hmm. Right. They sold her that section. She owned this section. So they sold her, they sold her this section. And then she started putting like right here um where is it it's it's you can't see but she started building started putting up like uh parking lots on the latest section and then when they finish with this road it's going to run across our our um veranda yes run across our veranda um and then the absorption there's a whole bunch of violation that's another view of it that's Whoa. This is where the this is where the 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 folks who sold her the, the lot they still live there. And yes. they sold her this, and then see she's getting ready to build another one here, which she shouldn't. But Rati, what I wanted to speak about as it relates to what the permit right allowed her to do, because All right. yes, that is what I wanted to speak on. Rati. See, Tata, sir. No, it's two point six acre, right? Yes. And on a 2.6 acres, they have something called a density plan, which says you can only get a certain amount of rooms on a certain piece of land. Yes. And up there, you're only supposed to get um, 2.678. Mm-hmm. Right? But somehow, she got approval for 95. So how she got right that approval? Yeah, that's why I'm trying to get the approval from them now. And then look at what they found out. They found out that she has, she has already gone in excess of 120 rooms. What? Originally, she she should only have eight, uh, 78, 78 because of 2.6 acres. She's only supposed to have 78, but she's gone over 120. And remember, look at this. Remember, I show you that this this right here, unit G, that hasn't been built yet. Whoa. <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. and then this one, this one back here, it, um, uh, Kevin Odea, because I would show you what happened is that it's below uh, so, some of these. Some you say she built this six story thing here, yes. She claims that it's three story because at the ground level, it's only three floors go up, but at the no, back, no. it's six. At the back, it's six, yeah. and the, and she turned the basement yeah. into apartments. We saw we have the plans. We saw the plans. She turned the basement into apartments right there. Into I think all of them are like one bedrooms because you can't see the bedroom, the bathroom, the living room, the kitchen, all of that right here. So she hasn't finished building it, but all of this is on hold right now. But this is what she should she should only be looking at seventy eight rooms, and somehow they give her ninety five. Mm -hmm. and, and then she's gone 120 she's gone yeah she's gone it, more than 120 so then so no Rati, we can understand why um after the the, the people's national party won um ksmsc that was the reason for her to go down to the office <laughs> and fit <laughs> yeah because right now what you're supposed to do you see this, um, this right here you see this right here this building this unit f yes unit f what you're supposed to do with unit f now if she's gonna say it's 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 six floors it's it's three floors because mm -hmm. she's she got the permit to be like three story and and some two story let me go back and look and see up here so where it's uh, all right here it is she's supposed to build six two story and two three story okay right but this is six stories this one right here 
unit F. Yes. But she's saying it's three because what happened is where the land is, the elevation right right here, yes. three of them below, three of them are below, <laughs> below um the surface level, right? But she yeah, count them yeah. as apart. She, she count them as as apartments. She's she's planning to sell them as apartments or rent them because we have the plans and and the three of them below they're supposed to be basement apartments and in that area basement apartments can only be for entertainment and storage. You can't exactly. use it for yeah. You can't use it for resi for residential living. And back here, three of the apartments in this F they're below the level. Of the of the of the of the ground right here. What a bunker on this. Right. So so that's why that we should get our 120. And you see where she have um she have this one right here. She have this one, this unit G, it hasn't gone up yet. But what happened is that the the let me go back and show you. Um yeah, see it right here. Yes. The, you can see this is where the road is supposed to be, you know. Right where you see unit A A. That is where the road is supposed to be, but somehow she got a permit, it looks like, to build another one there. So then she moved the entrance over here. And now she's on the lady's property. So, I mean, but that, that permit that she had gotten to do that cannot be legal, I'm ratty. Think of what I'm saying. To violate the original permit, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. Violate, she violate the original permit, so she get an she get an extended permit to do um to do what that has to be legal. Yeah, unit A A. So what 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 I'm hoping for is that we once we get the plans, then we're gonna go to KCMC and we're going to NEPA and say, listen, yeah. What, what will happen now serious, is that serious, 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 serious. Yes. What will happen is that um she, she these this six story one right here yes she'll have to knock three of the floors off that's okay because right, that's what others would have to do so it should have yeah she'll have to take off three other floors if she's saying this is if if she's selling them as apartments and it's six floors she only has permit for three floors so she has to take off the top the top three floors so she's in breach but she's in breach right now yeah yeah so I want to ask another question because Syrian Sue have something there that I that I wanted to ask. And here, here is what Syrian Sue is asking. I am and I'm asking that same question too. Can that parcel of land accommodate that scale of development? Because this is going to put pressure on the sewage system. <laughs> well, it's funny you mention that because here it is again, right? Um this, this is a lady's house right here. Yeah. And they wanna build they wanna build the road come down right here and they already they already started um started down uh, the woman property already and then they wanted to build this yeah and I think they wanna they wanna build right here they wanna build some car parks right here when I look at the plan this is what it looks like so they're gonna build a car park on the ladies property it looks like um Once and then this is this is a switch thing you know this one right you see right that's all yes and it's supposed to and it's it's supposed to be like three things that they're supposed to build and it's only one but look where they're below it and remember they had an earthquake the other day you know up that area and you see we're right below it wow this is right below it but if you look on units f, these are units f doesn't look safe where it is but if you have an earthquake because unit yeah f, and look where they're below unit, unit f touch, unit g yes and look what's below unit, unit f, f. It's touched. How's this below unit F? How's it below? Exactly. So, I mean, in terms of she going up, the height that she's going up, you understand? Isn't that it risk other people's property? The property's below? Yes, yeah, no, no. This is from another view. Well, if this come down, see the house, they have house right here. My goodness. And another house over this side right here. There's another house somewhere over here. You can see it um, right there. There you go. Yes. And this is this is a switch thing that they're building right here. Right. <laughs> and and by the way, Ratty, yeah. let me ask a question. Hold on, Ratty. If she's building a switch thing right there, as it relates to the side, does the side test because over a period of time, right, that switch can sleep under and go down and affect other people? They they consider that? 
Well, let me tell you, let me tell you something else. It's limestone. And when they started oh, drilling, when they started drilling, the rocks right now, the rocks, they have fissures in them. So what happened is that the 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 sewage is gonna leak. It's gonna leak um out into into the um it's gonna leak out of that area yes. and flow over wherever so wherever wherever it can flow to. But this is un this is unacceptable. And this is the prime minister wife. This is the this is the person Ratti who is the speaker of the house. This is the yeah. person who sits on the integrity commission oversight committee. Yeah, see it right there, so no, right here. Look, Jamaica need to see this. Look at this. This They're is right on the hillside. Well, you know, and you know what? Because they had a, an earthquake the other day, they need to go back out there and figure out. Okay, did it cause any damage? You know what I mean? They need to go back out there and figure this one out because yes, that's that's gonna be a problem. But and, you know, right let me see. yeah, we have this as a problem, right? As it relates to what is going on there. But the, right. the, 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 the bigger portion of the problem, Ratty, is the cost of this development 800 million that she uttered in court. We are not seeing that on the statutory declaration, you know, Ratty. right? That is a bigger problem. Yes. She has this problem. And she has the other problem in terms of that $800 million project not reflecting on the statutory declaration. Right. So this is serious. Well, I can tell you, they're in for... Ah, here it is. The, oh, our okay. five floors. You see, you see this? Everything, these two floors, they have to go. Because, see, this is considered basement. It's, here's the level of the ground. And they, yes. they, they dig out the hillside. And so this is supposed to be the first two floors. Wait a minute. It looks like it's the first three floors. Yeah, the first three floors are supposed to be cut ends like right there. First yes. three floors. Right. Um, the first three floors are supposed to be for storage. Mm -hmm. Or entertainment. But you have them, when you look at the plans, they're all they're they're one bedroom apartments. And I think they're like several one bedroom apartments here. Wow. And here is it here is it here is a sewer sewer thing right there. Exactly. But and you have people who are below the sewage. State. Below it, right. So you right. want have leakage. That is disrespectful. That is disrespectful, um Ratty. Yep. All right, here's the sewage thing. Here's the sewage thing. Here's what they say. The 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 the, the, the means of sewage treatment shall be to the satisfaction of the ministry of health that's what the, that's what the regulations say yes. but what you're supposed to have and i checked it with a friend of mine who's a developer in jamaica you're supposed to have a chlorine chamber you're supposed mm -hmm. to have a gravel filter belt bed okay. and you're supposed to have an absorption pit you have right? all of that, no here, here here you look at indicative breach it says to date there is so, no evidence of this type of sewage treatment being constructed as only an absorption pit is currently observed on the ground. So there's no gravel filter bed and there's no um, chlorine chamber. They can't wow. see that. This is serious. And you right? think the water commission say that they will not extend their sewage treatment in this area. So what happens is that she's going to have to put the... things in but like when people look here's the absorb this is what you're looking at right here that's yes. the absorption pit yes but they can't find the gravel bed and and um <laughs> um the gravel filter bed and the chlorine chamber and they can't this, find them this is the woman who sits ah, ah here's here's a picture here's the absorption pit right there there it is it's below it <laughs> it's below. Right. so what happened to the uh, the homes below that well, uh, then we'll move it to uh, see there. Eh? It's right on the side, right on the right. The, uh, they're right on the side of the hill. So if you have an earthquake, I remember no, we know it's it's limestone up there. Mm -hmm. 
And when they drill, it starts cause fissures in the rocks already. Start exactly. cause problems already. Mm -hmm. So the people them below that, God help them. No, but this is disrespect. This is the government with, um, that the people them vote for, supposed to respect the people's um, the people's rights, right? And they are abusing the people's rights. Abusing the people's rights. And yet, here is Andrew Holness, um wife. Um, is the Speaker of the House and sits on the Integrity Commission Oversight Committee, right? Overseeing her own investigation. That cannot be right. This cannot be right. Right? This is yeah. totally, oh, oh. you know. And, and then you know what happened? They, these people actually yeah. wrote to the Prime Minister and he has not responded to them. The they wrote to him about this, you know, and yeah, see, it was approved for chlorine chamber gravel filter bed absorption pit. But mm -hmm. they said there's no evidence of biodigester gravel filter bed and chlorine chamber. It's only this absorption pit. So that project need to um, need to be stopped. Yeah, then need to then them take over green space. Them don't know the green space. It's it's a whole heap of things. It's a whole a lot of mess. This is what you call Batman government. People believe that I'm taking it too personal. Right, Florence Brown is asking where she get all these monies to, to be building all these apartments. And I want to um burst Florence Brown bubble because Ratty, this, yeah. is not the only, this is not the only development that she has, Ratty, based on information that we are getting. No, the, the, in the same area, I have been told that there is another one that's even bigger than this one. Wow. Yeah.